Without a gavel, I think we can officially call the meeting to order. This meeting is called to order and uh, held this evening, April 10th, 2018, having called the meeting to order. Um, I would like to ask, if you would, to please stand with us for our Pledge of Allegiance, which will be followed by an invocation for counsel uh, after that. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we are indeed grateful for the blessings of this day, for health and strength and life itself, for this beautiful day, uh, and for the opportunity to come as public servants before you tonight and ask that you give us guidance and direction as we consider the business of this city. We thank you for the calling that you have placed upon our lives for public service. We pray that you will remind us daily of the needs of all of those members of our community. Uh, and that uh, we will be attentive and understanding and serve with empathy. We pray now that you will guide and direct us through the remainder of this meeting. We ask for safety as, um, as the attendees and uh, members of this council head home after the meeting. And all these things we ask in your son's name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Ms. Duncan, anyone to appear in public forum this evening? No, sir. With that, Council, we'll move to the minutes of the Council meeting. You have the minutes from the March 27th meeting contained in your packet. I'll entertain a motion to receive. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any items of note for the clerk? Hearing none, Ms. Duncan? Mr. Airwood? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Ms. Booker? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Ms. Albert? Yes. Mayor Dana? Yes. With that, then we'll move to the administrator's report. Mr. Driggers. Thank you, sir. Uh, obviously, looking at your agenda, it's probably a night we should have scheduled a special presentation for you. To see. <laughs> <laughs> Rather light agenda. Um, and that happens sometimes. A couple of things we do want to make you uh, aware of, uh, particularly some calendar items. Uh, this weekend, we do celebrate our international festival. That'll be taking place uh, here at City Park. Uh, We'll be here from 11 until 4, again, this Saturday. Uh, we're expecting about four or 5,000 uh, residents, guests, uh, here on the grounds. So we certainly hope that you'll be able to come by and join us for that as we celebrate the diversity of our community. Uh, it's always a wonderful event for us. I think we're in our fifth year now with that event. So it is continuing to grow and very, very pleased with that program. It'll be a busy weekend for us here in the city. Our baseball uh, opening starts actually on Friday evening and rolls over into Saturday as well. Uh, we have about 550 participants in our baseball program this year uh, with about 50 teams. And that program has grown so tremendously over the years uh, that our traditional Saturday opening day is now opening weekend. Uh, so again, we'll be celebrating that uh, this Friday evening and on Saturday. Uh, certainly hope that you can come by and uh, at least see what's happening as part of those festivities as well. Our Kids Planet uh, program is continuing to work very, very well. We are uh, rounding up and completing uh, our visits to six of our elementary schools, um, actually interviewing and working with children here in our community, receiving input uh, from the children in the community, asking them what they would like to see uh, out at Kids Planet and in Century Park. Uh, that process has gone extremely well. Uh, we, we have been uh, very, very pleased with the cooperation we've received from uh, both Greenville School District and Spartanburg uh, School District 5. Uh, both have been very, very welcoming to us as we've come in to meet with the children. But we also have an opportunity for parents and uh, the community alike. Uh, if they would like to bring their children, that's wonderful as well. But on Tuesday, April 17th here at City Hall, uh, we will have a drop-in session between 5 and 8 p.m. again here at City Hall. The purpose of that time between 5 and 8, it's not a three-hour program, you drop in any time, uh, but the intent is for folks to come in and share with us about what they would like to see in that facility, those things that they may have concerns about relative to the safety of the park, um, but what elements that they would certainly like to make sure as we do the redesign of that facility. Uh, this project is in cooperation with our design uh, partner, Alta 
uh, design and also with our Parks and Recreation Department. Again, that's going to be on Tuesday evening, April 17th, uh, here in this building uh, from 5 until 8. Um, our employee picnic is just around the corner and as we get toward the end of the month. Do note that we're doing something a bit different. We polled our employees this year and we're actually doing a Friday evening uh, employee picnic. So that is coming up on April the 27th. Again, that's on our Friday evening. Um, you will be receiving information from our Human Resources Department about that, but we certainly wanted to make sure you're getting that on your schedule. We're getting uh, good, uh, good response uh, from our employees um, and also their spouses and their children for that event. So it's a bit different for us this year, a different format. We're going to give that a try. Our employees asked us to, to take a look at that, and we're very, very glad to be able to, to try that a little bit different uh, this year. Your council retreat is scheduled for Tuesday and Wednesday, May 8th and 9th. Um, we, again, will be starting that, uh, that process midday, uh, right after lunch on Tuesday. Uh, we will work up until uh, the time that we will take a short break uh, before the start of your council meeting that evening. It is on the evening of a regularly scheduled council meeting. Uh, we have a special presentation uh, concerning economic development as part of the council meeting itself. Uh, and then we will have some discussion concerning economic development as part of your meeting. Uh, we'll gather back on Wednesday morning and we will work until lunchtime uh, on Wednesday. So midday, Tuesday through your meeting on Tuesday evening, back on Wednesday morning through midday then. Um, the feedback we received from each of you was that uh, half days may would be a better uh, situation for you relative to uh, work and jobs and other commitments, uh, and also that you would be in here for your regular scheduled meeting anyway. Uh, and so this was the schedule that seemed to work for most folks. Um, and I think Mayor Danner's kind of reaching out to make sure that uh, we're, we're getting uh, participation with everyone in that process. If there are subject areas that you want to make sure that we are covering as part of that meeting, please let us know. Uh, it's, uh, it's amazing how quickly the time will feel. As you know, we always, uh, we always run out of time. Uh, there's always more things to talk about than we're able to get in there, but we do specifically have some items for long-range planning that we need to get feedback uh, from the council as a group so that we can help uh, make sure that we are appropriating resources in our new budget uh, as well as we are putting those plans uh, into place relative to our strategic plan uh, for the next year any revisions in that as well. Freedom Blast um, is June 30th, and we just want to go ahead and give you plenty of notice of that. Uh, that is the last Saturday in June. Again, that is June 30th, uh, the Saturday prior to the 4th of July. Uh, we are excited for that again this year. Um, you'll start seeing more and more information uh, as the plans are, uh, are being disclosed uh, for that event. Uh, Parks and Recreation, Police, Fire, all of our departments uh, very, very much at the table making sure that all the arrangements are prepared for that uh, for that weekend. Probably one of our largest events that we certainly hold here at City Park. Wanted to make you aware that our uh, we, in our partnership with the Greenville County Legislative Delegation Transportation Committee, and our work relative to our downtown project, uh, we have awarded uh, the bid for the paving of the uh, alleyways and of the parking areas. Um, that work is scheduled to begin in early May. We are expecting that probably in the first, second week of May that we will actually mobilize on that project. The uh, contractors, the general contractors intent is to get in, mobilize, do the demolition, get that work done, uh, in all of our locations and then back out uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, the company that is doing this project, and I'm actually losing their name at the moment, but the company that is doing this project uh, awarded the contract, uh, had experience in doing multiple streetscape type projects, very much alleyway uh, parking type projects, have worked with Cotransco on several other projects, have a great reputation, good rapport with that team. Uh, as you are aware, we have retained Phil Rhodes. He's come out of retirement to serve as our project manager 
uh, for this part of the project as well as our streetscape project. Mr. Rhodes uh, will actually hit the ground next Thursday, starting to make contact with the property owners that will be affected by that paving, uh, because these are mostly the folks that will that touch those alleyways or are impacted by the, the, the parking areas. Uh, but starting next Thursday, he starts knocking on doors and reaching out to folks, uh, letting them know what the schedules are, sharing with them his, uh, his telephone number, his business card, how they can reach him if they have questions about the process, as, as we work through that. That, of course, uh, will be the preamble for us uh, to begin uh, our larger streetscape project. Uh, we have not yet submitted that for proposals or for bids. We're still in the design phase of that project, but we felt very, very uh, strongly that we needed to get in, get those alleys and the parking lots prepared uh, so that before we started the project for the streetscape, uh, these businesses have access to rear entrances, those types of things, and we're out of the way relative to that project. Uh, but we are moving forward with that, met with the, uh, with the uh, engineers on the project, uh, general contractor on the project, uh, and our team that will be working on the communication side of that. Uh, met with all of those folks earlier this week and uh, moving forward in early May to, for construction of that. And last but not least, I did want to share with you uh, as you are aware, each year we publish um, a, uh, an annual report. Uh, several years ago, I think now about five years ago, maybe, or, or four years ago, we're in our fifth edition of that, uh, we moved to an electronic format of that uh, report. Uh, Steve Owens is the editor of that. Uh, he is the, uh, the creator and, uh, and all things possible to make that, that publication uh, available for us. I've asked him to join us this evening to share uh, this year's annual report, uh, its format, uh, and maybe a little bit of information of how we intend to roll that out to the community and make it available as well. Mr. Owens. Thank you, Mr. Driggers. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Thank you for the opportunity to present the 2017 City of Greer Annual Report. Uh, the online flipbook format should be familiar to you, as Mr. Driggers mentioned. This is the fifth year we will have used that format. Uh, there has been one major change, and that is in how we produce the flipbook. Uh, in past years, I would submit a PDF of the publication to our online vendor and receive in return files that would be placed on the root directory of our website server. <laughs> I'm not an <laughs> IT guy. <laughs> I can design it, but somehow it works. Uh, this year, I actually purchased the flipbook software. And um, there was a learning curve, but it also brought with it two distinct benefits. Uh, the first was the ability to better brand the experience to the city of Greer. The software allows us to insert custom backdrops. We can cater those to the city. Uh, we can put custom links. Um, I haven't gotten to that point of the manual yet, but we can insert videos and other electronic formats. So moving forward, I expect to see some, some great progress with this. Secondly, placing the flipbook files on the root directory of the web server, see I had to write it down, uh, limited us to one book per year, and obviously that was the city's annual report. Because the book is now hosted on the cloud, uh, we are able to post an unlimited number of flipbooks for $1 per month per flipbook. So $12 a year, we're able to have one entire publication up. As a result, the Police Department and Parks and Recreation Department's annual reports, which you heard earlier at meetings this year, uh, both are currently online and linked from their departmental pages. You heard the Building and Development Standards report last meeting, and that will be up within the next week. So we're looking forward to sharing more individual departmental reports with the residents, uh, as well as the city's annual report. With that said, I'd like to give you a quick tour of the 2017 annual report. We'll call it up. There we are, and you'll see the navigation arrows and everything across the top. <laughs> These, uh, this, this format gives us the ability to email the file to someone, invite them to actually come back to the link and look at it themselves. We're able to do it more easily on social media. Uh, 
You're able to zoom, you're able to zoom into any one given page, and you're able to go full screen, which we will for the purpose of this presentation. Uh, currently, the book is linked from the City of Greer's homepage under the news section, and as well as the social media sites. Uh, I hope you'll visit those links and spend some time reviewing the year that was. So as we look at the cover, you'll see the eclipse, the Great American Eclipse. It was one of our more popular events at City Park uh, during 2017. That is our cover. We'll move inside and you'll hear the flipping. It's all interactive. Um, good looking folks upper left there and you'll see the Greer at the glance give people a snapshot of the city. Moving to the table of contents, they're able to move very quickly through the publication. Our inside page always uh, contain columns from the mayor and the city administrator. You'll see the uh, story about the downtown work being done, the infrastructure work by CPW, and the upcoming streetscape work by the city. On the right, you'll see work that has been done by the city to assure accessibility throughout our facilities. Moving inside, the first half of this publication is more news stories, mini features, and features. So people can move very quickly and catch up. It also is a very good archival tool as we seek to go back. You know, some things seem like they just happened last year, but they may have been four years ago. Um, that may have something to do with my age, I'm not sure. But uh, here you'll see as we move towards some of the honors the city has received, the gross retail sales story that was so big for us this year, uh, the city's bond rating improving, uh, there you see former Chief Dean Chris coming back. Uh, international honor, honors from ICMA. Uh, hot air balloon that was used for promotion of the new uh, Call Before You Dig promotion. Uh, LED lighting on Highway 29. Uh, there's Dr. Mayor Banner on the bottom. Uh, the radio system switch over. Um, sewer plan that you uh, approved in October, I believe it was. A career planning process that uh, Chief Matt Hamby has done with the police department. The hurricane planning that we did um, back with Hurricane Irma. That's uh, something that we do whenever bad weather is forecast. And the city does a good job of actually meeting to make sure that we are prepared for any eventuality. Uh, fortunately, Irma moved off to the left and west, left coast. And uh, we were very fortunate not to... Uh, receive her wrath. The new kennel will be arriving next Tuesday morning. Uh, there is a look at one very similar uh, facility that this company has produced and that is something that the police department and I know the entire city has been looking forward to. Moving on you'll see of our, some of our two new homegrown newcomers. Uh, Sarah Anderson who joined the police department and Noah Sanford who is a uh, new firefighter and EMT with the uh, fire department. Uh, both excelled at their academies. They received the top academic awards and uh, both being Greer natives, we think that's pretty special to be able to keep them here. Update on the K-9, as you know, Officer Stryker has a new partner. Uh, Anna Barnett took over for James Compton this year and uh, the dogs have been everywhere this year. They've been on calendars, uh, through the HICO fund with Anderson County Sheriff's Department. Uh, they are receiving a uh, number of grant proposals. They just received a Narcan uh, gift for them in the event of uh, accidental overdose. Uh, so this is something that really reaches out to our community and the dogs are great ambassadors uh, for the city. Here we see the aforementioned Eclipse. A uh, very quick uh, feature story on that little bit about what happened and we'll be able to look back on that in time and say we were in the path of totality. As the mayor's column referenced, uh, we are doing renovation at the station. Uh, CPW did its infrastructure work uh, beginning last May and throughout the year they'll be done in the second quarter at which point the city will begin its uh, work in late summer. And also a large part of that is the hotel and garage project which has been no secret. Uh, came out late last year and uh, received a great bit of news. From there we move into the departmental report starting with the finance report. Again, very good report this year. Building and development standards. Every department received at least one page of updates. 
for we think it's a good reason to to come in and put the departmental books online so people will be able to see more and more information about them there's fire department municipal court parks and recreation the police department and public services and we always like to include information on our very good partners like Greer Development Corporation and Greenville County Redevelopment Authority who you've heard much from in the last month. We always end the publication with the City Services Directory and on the back you'll see the City of Greer Mission Statement. We think there's no better statement to to leave readers with than what we're here to do. Uh, again going back up to the commands we'll just jump right back to the front and it makes it very simple. I think it's a very easy to navigate publication. Uh, it's easy to read if someone wants to enlarge it. They can go in and do that. They actually customize the size with the slider. They can go in and move it around however they might like. And again, you'll see in the back there the, the Cannon Center and uh, the gazebo. That's a quick look at it. Uh, we have put information out to the news media. We've obviously used social media, which is a tremendous outlet for us right now. Um, we we'll probably will be running some advertisements to let folks know that this is there. And uh, we hope word of mouth is also a big one. As folks come in, they're able to hit that envelope link and very quickly send a copy of this out to however they want to do that. So I'd be glad to answer any questions about it. I'm sure this is a publication you've seen. We're growing with it. We're uh, taking it to the next level and look forward to building it with uh, some video and other specific interactive features in mind next year. Awesome. Great. Council? I'd just like to thank you for all this hard work. Great. You know, whenever we do MLK every year, they, call, they got a nickname for him now. They call him Mr. Magic because every year he outdoes the last year. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to get that to go at home, man. It won't work. <laughs> <laughs> they call me Mr. Give Me Money. <laughs> Don't push it. <laughs> Steve, uh, from, from the website, can we track the hits on this, or is this just part of the website? We can. We can track these through our Google Analytics, Okay. and we will be doing that. Uh, as well as the other departmental reports. Good. Other? We'll, we'll also use our partners at the Chamber and at GDC through their distribution methods. Our intent is to get this in as many hands as we can. We'll do it as a, as, uh, as a link uh, to those messages. And of course, when folks uh, go to the hyperlink, go to the site, we're then able to track uh, how many hits we get, how, how long, how much time they spend on the site. Uh, so that we can start to understand a bit of, of in that report where people's interest is. That's what we want to emphasize more as we're going forward. So we'll, we'll use those analytics, uh, allowing us to understand a bit of where interest is for those types of reports. Again, we're very, very uh, proud of Steve's work on this. He, he writes it, he designs it, he publishes it. Um, <coughs> And, and he does that while we're trying to prepare for International Festival and Family, family uh, Freedom Blast and all of those things that, that take place as well. So I uh, certainly wanted to invite him in uh, to share his work with us this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good very good. And in conclusion, uh, members of council, just as uh, in partnership with our folks at Greer Development Corporation, uh, they will be hosting an industry appreciation barbecue that is happening on Thursday, April 19th. You should have received uh, information uh, directly from them on that event, but that's Thursday, April 19th from noon until 1.30 uh, out at Caliber Ridge. Um, and so um, we're very, very glad uh, to partner with CPW and, of course, the folks at Greer Development Corporation uh, to help make that happen. We are indeed appreciative of our local industries, and this is one of two events that we host uh, with them uh, to, to say thank you to those industries. So, Mr. Deaton, we really appreciate your uh, time and effort and your work on this, on this project. Hope you can join us for that. That concludes my report. Glad to answer any questions that you may have this evening. Thank you, sir. Council, in regards to our um, city council uh, planning retreat, I do want to follow up on that as uh, the administrator and I have had an opportunity to uh, to, uh, to talk and to, and to begin some planning for this. I, I have got, um, as you well know, we, we had a bit of difficulty 
trying to find a time that worked for everybody, and we understand that there are always obligations and different types of commitments, but we do want to honor the time of our staff as they spend planning time doing this and putting presentations together. We also have a number of items that will be relevant not only to longer term planning, but also to our budget process. The times listed on this survey are not specific. As you heard the administrator say, we have not got specific times planned yet. So this is just kind of a framework of where we're going to be in terms of the planning as a general rule. If you will take time this evening to fill this out, as the top portion of it says, these are your expected times that you're going to be there or not be there. This is going to help us plan, because if there is an item that we feel like is going to require some sort of official action on the part of council in a meeting after our planning session, particularly relative to the budget, we want to try and schedule around that if we know that you're not going to be here or we're not going to have a quorum in some regard. So if you'll just take a minute either sometime this evening or in the next day or two and return those to Tammy, it will help give us a little bit better idea about when we're going to have the most people there and when we won't. And that will help us in terms of doing a little long range planning. As I said earlier in my comments, we've got a couple of things that we're going to need to pay some particular attention to, and we want to make sure that we've got as many folks there as we possibly can. So from this, we'll continue to refine sessions and times and that sort of thing. This was just to give me kind of a general idea so that as we move forward with this, we'd have a little something that we could plan on. Okay? With that then, we're going to move on then to items of new business, the first of which this evening is Ordinance No. 12-2018. This is an ordinance to change the zoning classification of property owned by Leon Hicks Real Estate, LLC, located at 304 Pelham Street from R12 Residential to C3 Commercial. This ordinance is in regard to rezoning a parcel located at 304 Pelham Street. The owner is requesting rezoning from R12 single family to C3. Mr. McMahon, can you give us an update in regards to Ordinance No. 12-2018? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Ordinance 12-2018 is a rezoning request for a parcel located at 304 Pelham Street. The owner is requesting a rezoning from R12 single family residential to C3 Commercial. The purpose of this rezoning is to use the structure as an automotive garage. The Planning Commission conducted a public hearing on March 19th for the rezoning request. Planning Commission recommended to deny this request. I just wanted to show a quick aerial of the zoning for this area. And that is all the information I have at this time, sir. By show of hand, is the owner of the property or a representative of the owner of the property with us this evening? Let the record indicate nobody's indicated so. For the purpose of discussion, I'll entertain a motion to receive. So moved. Second. The floor is open for discussion or questions. Everything yellow is residential? Yes, sir. It is R12 for the majority of it. The green is R11 and kind of the yellow, the darker yellow is R7.5. What's red? There's a laundry mat caddy corner to that, too. The laundry mat is right here. Directly across that property is on C2. It was on rezone C2 back in 1983. I totally agree with Planning Commission that C3 is not proper. I'm not quite sure why staff even allowed the owner to even submit for C3. I mean, I understand that maybe C3 doesn't even, is the only thing that you can have a garage, but it's almost like a waste of money for the petitioner because you're not going to get C3 in a residential area 
Um, I mean, even though you've got a, a laundromat across the street, that's C2. And there's probably some, there's other um, areas or other properties that have been used in the past for garages, but I guess it, you know, the city never really said anything about it. But do um, you know why, the, 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 was that the property owner's request to go to C3 or was that staff's discussion with property owner saying, Yes, sir. We discussed with the, the property owner himself that his request of C3 would not be recommended by staff. He wanted to go ahead and see if planning commission would go through with it. Okay. There seems to be, there's a building right next to him. If you're standing in the street looking at his built, this building he's talking about, which looks like a house, but then there's another building right next door to it. What is that? Do you know what that one is? What that one? It doesn't resemble a house quite as much as it does like a barn or a store. We used to think it was an old store at one time. Yeah, yeah. 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 a roofing business operated out at one time. Uh -huh. It used to be an old general store. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But I, I don't have an issue do with, with um, mixed use and, and a, a, a garage. Um, probably, if it was done properly, would, would fit that area. But, um, I mean, if, if, it, if that was a property owner that came in and said, I want C3, then so be it. Others? When it says garage, I mean, is that like automotive repair shop? Is that what he's wanting or what? Yes, ma'am. Okay. This is not connected with anybody on up the street. I know we several years ago we had an issue with it someone living about two or three doors up that had basically a garage it's, in their backyard. It's, the, it's a different property owner. Yeah. Okay. No, I don't think that's related. Right? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to agree with Mr. Arrowwood. This, this area is just now really beginning to get some legs and, and, and we've got, you know, a huge investment we're making in that area to help stimulate some of that growth and I just don't think that's an appropriate use. Others? Comments? Questions? I don't think it's an appropriate use either. I, I, I will say one thing, uh, and, and this is kind of deviating off this, but, but it, it came up in a conversation I was having with Kelly, and it was regarding our sign ordinance. It's kind of similar to this. You know, that was, that Pelham Street is somewhat mixed use. It was more mixed use than uh, in years past than it has been now. Um, very similar to our um, mill communities where you have I one and residential um, and, and I think that we, we, we need to be aware of this I asked Ms. McCormick about signage and um, what's the word a, a mural on the side of the building and she said well it's not allowed unless it's already there and then it's protected with historical and you can go back and update it and so that really doesn't make a lot of sense because at one time it wasn't historical it was advertising uh, so anyway that's just food for thought and C3 doesn't belong there but maybe an excuse if it's done properly others Miss Duncan Mr. Arrowwood uh, this, a yes vote confirms the planning commission, correct? No, a yes vote is to approve. Okay, no. Mr. Griffin? No. Ms. Booker? No. Mr. Dumas? No. Mr. Bettis? No. Ms. Albert? No. Mayor Danner? No. Next item before us this evening is the first reading of ordinance number 14-2018, an ordinance to provide for the annexation of property owned by Billy Ray Henderson, Jr., located at 1000 South Main Street by 100% petition, and to establish a zoning classification of DRD for said property. <clears throat> Mr. McMahon. Thank you, sir. Ordinance 14-2018 er, is an annexation zoning request for property located at the intersection of South Highway 14 and Mitchell Drive in Greenville County. The parcel annexation is 1.35 acres. 
the property is proposed for incorporation into an existing DRD design review district. It is called Towns at South Main. It came before council back in May of last year. Um, Planning Commission will conduct a public hearing on April 16th for the zoning of this parcel. I just wanted to just give an aerial with the zoning of the area. And a proposed site plan there proposing 14 additional townhomes on the 1.35 acres. It's the site of the single family residence. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is a, if you can't beat them, join them. <laughs> <laughs> Council, for the yes, purpose sir. of discussion, I'll entertain a motion to receive. So move. Second. I have, a, I have a motion and a second. Floor is open for discussion. Brandon, this may be outside of your purview, but if we are adding, what did we say, 14 additional units? It is a total of 95. Um, the density is 10.3 per acre. I, I guess my question is that the site work is done for the most part. So are they going to be able to address stormwater and other issues? And are the accommodations that were made prior to the acquisition of this property going to be sufficient for that? They are, they are addressing that currently now with stormwater. Um, they knew they were getting this parcel kind of when they started all the grading out there. It was just, I think, a longer process than they were expecting to actually acquire it. Um, so their plans have all along been to obtain this property. Okay. The stormwater will fit in and they will have to update anything that needs to be updated. And, and it does cul-de-sac there um, at the property does not uh, enter onto um, 14 it's South. The only entrance on the board. Correct. Okay. All right. Others? Questions? Comments? Is the owner of the property or um, representative of the owner of the property with us this evening? Let the record indicate no one um, said so. Any additional comments? Hearing none, Ms. Duncan? Mr. Arrowwood? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Ms. Booker? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Ms. Albert? Yes. Mayor Danner? Yes. Council, that is all the uh, business we have before us this evening with the exception of two items for executive session. Um, I'll entertain a motion that we go into executive session that includes the two matters. Valid. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion we go into executive session for a contractual matter uh, to enter in, uh, to discuss a potential contract for property purchase as allowed by state statute 30-4-7A2. Do separately. Do them separately. I, we could do it. Yeah. Okay. And also, uh, in my motion to discuss a matter relating to Berkshire Place as allowed by state statute 30-4-7A2. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, motion and a second. Any discussion in that regard? Ms. Duncan. Mr. Arrowwood? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Ms. Booker? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Ms. Albert? Yes. Mayor Bettis? Yes. Council in executive session this evening, we've considered a contractual matter uh, relative to state statute 34, 30-4-7A2, and also a contractual matter in regards to state statute 30-4-7-A2. Uh, these two matters require no, act, no action. Do I hear a motion to come out of executive session? So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. Ms. Duncan? Mr. Airwood? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Ms. Booker? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Ms. Albert? Yes. Mayor Danner? Yes. Magically, <laughs> magically appeared. <laughs> Stand adjourned. <laughs>